Welcome to this week's edition of Coach Prep. Coach Don and I are here in the Cherokee Batting Range Studio getting ready to record episode number 183. We're going to talk about catcher positioning this week. We spent a little bit of time uh, this last couple of weeks talking about positioning. We want to talk about the catching position specifically because I think there's a whole lot of misunderstandings and misconceptions. We want to make sure we kind of give our Iron coaches some out. things to think about. Before we get into that, let's talk about the Anderson Bat Company. Everything Fast Pitch is very proud to have Anderson Bat Company as our presenting sponsor. Anderson Bat Company is using the latest and greatest bat technology to corner the market in the fast pitch world. They have the minus 9 rocket tech, the minus 10 carbon, and the minus 11 carbon light. Anderson Bat Company is using this technology to put a high-performing bat in the hands of hitters that really know the difference between a good bat and a great bat. We're also working with Anderson to provide a discount for all of our listeners. Go to the Anderson Bat Company website and order your bats, use the EFP20 discount, which is for everything fast pitch, and you'll get a 20% discount. It's a great way for you to save a little bit of money on a great bat and also help support everything fast pitch at the same time. Also, make sure you go to patreon.com slash everything fast pitch. Become a patron if you can. You know, Coach Don and I have been talking about this for a while. We still need more people to come on board. We would love for you to be a patron if you can. If you see value in what we're doing, if you want to help us keep the podcast rolling, it's 5 10 or $20 a month. Go to patreon.com slash everything fast pitch and it'll all get explained to you there. And we really do need the help. We would love for you to come on board. So Don, catcher positioning. Here's my, my take on it. And this is you know, something we've talked about a little bit in the past, but I think it's such an important thing that we need to make sure that we revisit it periodically. And I think one of the biggest misconceptions, one of the things that I see with catching that I just don't quite understand because I, I don't see it with other positions, but that somehow the catcher is supposed to sit in the exact same spot every time, no matter what, whereas we would have the shortstop shade one way or the other, or center fielder would shade one way or the other. We might shift the infield around a little bit. We might cheat the middle. We might squeeze the middle. We might do all these other things with other positions, but somehow the catcher just goes and he puts her two feet in the two holes behind home plate, and that's where she sits for the whole game. Well, Tori, it seems like that's where everybody is, so that's where I should be too, right? Just, well, I think just... that's the one caveat I'm going to throw out there. I think, unfortunately, for a lot of catchers, that's kind of the assumption that they've made. Because the holes behind the plate are so deep, it's almost uncomfortable to try to set up any place else. But the reality of it is, if you're the third baseman, and they show bunt, and it's a bunt situation, well, you know you're going to play up shorter because you need to move up so you have a chance to make a play on the bunt. Just like if you're a catcher, if the hitter moves way up in the front of the batter's box, you should move up closer to the plate like you would expect your third baseman or first baseman or shortstop or center fielder to move. And I think that's one of those things that unfortunately I see not enough uh, adjusting and moving and, and positioning for the catchers to be truly effective when they're playing that position. Well, I think it's a, it's a much better plan too for your, for your pitcher's background for the center of your body to be where you're expecting the pitch to be. Right. We can't tip that off too early and we don't want to initiate our reception of the pitch in that spot too early because a batter can, can peak a little bit or be, you know, looking with their peripheral vision right. and, or, or a and get third an, base coach or somebody in the dugout or whatever, yeah. get an idea of all that stuff. But that's something that needs to, the movement and the timing of all that needs to be practiced, obviously in the bullpen and in, in warm up stuff or practice sessions. But it's much better for a pitcher to have the, the whole vision of a, a catcher to be centered or as a backdrop for the a location that they want. Versus just sticking your glove to the inside or the outside. Right. And then you're also, too, in a wild pitch or in an erroneous pitch, um, you're limited how far you can go in that direction. Right. Right. And I mean, making it where we have that slight movement to the in or to the out, whichever one we're, we're working on, um, gives us a chance to move, you know, a much greater distance in that direction. Right. So catcher starting with their feet a little bit wide when we deliver a signal allows us right at right at that moment when the pitcher gets into her movement or gets into her drive position if we bring the outer foot you know if I'm going to if I've got a right-handed batter and I'm moving to the left side batter's box your left foot's going to come together with the right foot and then we're going to spread back open to give that backdrop on an outside location right but, but doing that smooth doing that in a timely manner doing it in a, a very subtle or quiet and calm way without, you know, bouncing or disrupting the the vision of the umpire. There's all kinds of things that kind of go into that. 
but I think that that's going to give us the very best chance to, to do a good job behind the plate. Right. Well, one of the things that I think has really clouded people's opinion about this whole thing is we're so afraid of catcher's interference that we've got catchers more and more setting themselves up in positions to make sure that that could never happen. And so, you know, one of the, the things that I, I learned at a very early age and, and uh, from some people that are a lot more experienced and smarter about softball than me was that the catching position requires you to, to be able to adjust to what the hitter is doing in the box. And that might mean that you're moving from pitch to pitch or situation to situation, like you just said. But also in general, let's say if you're playing against a, let's say you've got a drop ball pitcher and the other team's adjustment is they say, okay, you know, she's, she's throwing a lot of drop balls. So we're going to move way up in the box so we can hit it earlier. Well, if, if the hitter moves way up in the box, but you stay back way back in the catcher's box where you were, you've just really played into that hitter's hands because now for the pitcher to throw a pitch that you can catch, you've given them what they want. She's got to throw it way higher because you're catching it five, six, eight, ten feet deeper than where the she can't the, make the, the same adjustment, up, right? Yeah, because she can't move the pitcher's mound. What we have to understand is that if the hitter moves up, my pitcher's targeting is going to change a little bit. So then my my positioning has to change a little bit. The grand rule of thumb that I hold really hold true is that the catcher, with her glove hand should almost be able to touch the hitter, wherever the hitter is. So if the hitter goes way up in the box, you should be able to reach out straight arm and like flick her. Almost touch her knee. Yeah, touch her knee or her her thigh with the the tip of your glove. If you're any further away than that, you're too far back. And now there's a lot of reasons why I think that that's important. One, we already talked about it. It makes it better for your pitcher for targeting pitches that are moving. But even if it's she's just throwing a fastball, if you get closer to the hitter and closer to home plate, more pitches look like strikes, so it helps the umpire and it helps you get more pitches called strikes. It puts you in a much better position because you're closer to second base or closer to first base if a ball gets bunted or a, or a base runner's trying to steal, that you're you know, shortening the distance that the ball has to travel before you catch it, and then also the distance that you have to throw it. So that you know, it increases the likelihood that you might throw people out on, on steals or, or make more plays on bunts. And the last one, and this is one that I think people really don't understand, when you're tucked in where you're supposed to be, you get hit by less foul balls. You get hit by less of those erroneous pitches, as you the, call them. The shocking ones. Right. So, so you're close enough that that ball that just tips off the bat is going to probably end up in your glove as often uh, as it's going to hit you. I was just about to say that you can uh, have a big impact in the game if you catch some right. of those, right? Yeah. And so, you know, again, the idea if if she's, you know, really crowding the plate and you want to set up for that outside corner, you can leave your feet where they are and just reach outside, which, you know, you already touched on, Don, is a really bad idea on, on, on all fronts. Or we can, you know, change our positioning and move our body out that way. You know, if she's, uh, she's way off the plate and we decide we want to, you know, move our target way inside for some reason, you know, again, you know, the idea of the pitcher and catcher working together and the catcher working to adjust to what the pitcher needs her to do and what the situation needs her to do in that situation, I think is something that we got to spend a lot more time working on and a lot more time talking about. I've shared this with, you know, some teams when I've done some of the rent-a-coach stuff and had several coaches and a couple of catchers' parents reach back out after like, oh my gosh, this is the, you know, I can't believe it was this simple. I can't believe how much better I'm I'm doing. I can't believe how many more plays I'm making. I can't believe how much more success my pitcher is having now that I'm moving around the way I'm supposed to. No, I think that's a a beautiful thing when it happens. And again, age groups and quality of ball and stuff like that kind of has a bit of an impact in the hitters doing what they're supposed to do. Right. If we have younger kids and they're, they're, you know, swinging late or kind of swinging back or casting and doing things that they wouldn't do um, at a higher level that can have a little bit of an impact on a real young catcher. Right. But to really get that concept and, and watch, it's kind of fun to watch a uh, ball on TV because they show a good side view often of a hitter and the catcher looks like they're right up underneath them. Right. But all the contact that's happening, the swing that's happening happens out in front of a hitter. You know, even the most outside pitch is going to be maybe at the midpoint of their body, right? which we will never get our glove up that far even being up underneath that hitter. So it's pretty exciting. Right. But so the, I guess uh, the, the biggest point I wanted to make is let's spend less time worrying about the occasional catcher's interference and start to think more about all the benefits that we gain 
from teaching our catchers to get up in there where they belong. And yeah, Don, I do understand your point. If we're talking eight and under softball and, and the hitters are, are all over the map and you know, the, the teams are all over the map. Weird you know, swings. Yeah, you might, you, I mean, I had a girl that played for happen. me when I was yeah. at Tennessee Tech. Whenever she was in a slump, I knew what she was going to do. She was going to move all the way in the back of the box and she was going to try to hit the catcher's glove. Right. And it worked every once in a while. Yeah. My argument with her always was, well, instead of working so hard to try to get catcher's interference, why don't you work a little bit harder on your hitting? <laughs> so maybe you could actually hit the ball instead of having to hit the catcher. But she never seemed to, and we never seemed to connect on that, uh, on that point. The, the whole idea for catcher positioning is we want to be thinking about, you know, that, you know, we always talk about the batter's boxes, you know, seven feet long and three feet deep for a reason. So the hitter can move around to adjust to what fits the situation and what they're trying to do and, and to give them some flexibility. Just like the catcher's box, the area behind home plate is not, you know, a, a one foot box where you you're trapped. Stay right in there. It, yeah. it's, it's got, you know, the, the same range of motion, same range of, uh, of ability to move around that, that the batter's box would have. And so the age and, and skill level obviously is going to have some impact, but overall across the board, I think if, if we went and watched a, a thousand catchers, play this weekend if we are if a thousand catchers parents sent us videos i'm going to tell you right now i'll bet you everything i own and a kidney that 950 of them are too deep too often they could be up a little bit yeah and i like your point tori about uh if we've never been called for catcher's interference then we've probably missed out on either fielding a bunt uh throwing you know, out a steal throwing out a steal catching a, a, a third foul strike off of the bat right when it fouls off into your glove we've missed out on a lot of different things for sake of not ever being um, called for catcher's interference being up too close and we've gotten drilled in the mask a thousand times with that foul tip that if we're up where we belong is in our glove yep. is now hitting us in the mask from a personal preference I'd much rather, you know, look like the rock star who's, you know, catching some of those third strike foul tips for an out versus the kid whose mask is getting spun around on their head three times because they're getting drilled in the face with a with a foul tip. And this is a great time of year for all of us, Tori, to kind of be experimenting a little bit, right? right. If we get called for a, a catcher's interference at this point of the season, it's not going to be, uh, you know, too devastating to a weekend or to a team. Right. So. But And I think for our coaches, you're, you're the ones that have to start to change this uh, philosophy and, and, and start to instill this. Because I've had this argument with, with coaching friends well, you know, that, that catcher's interference, that's just too da- damaging. I said, well, just, you know, add up all the other plays that you don't make. You know, it's, it's one of those, you know, crazy things. You can't always remember how many times we should have gotten an out or we we should have made a play, but we remember that one time that, you know, that you know that we got a catcher's interference. The call. foul ball went off my glove. Yeah. But so anyhow, catching positioning, it's a really important thing. You know, the two holes that are dug in there, it's because, uh, unfortunately, it's because most people don't really understand how this position is supposed to be played. So we got to keep working on helping our players understand. And we got to really work on their conditioning because if they've got to sit on the edge of the hole or on the hillside next to the hole to position themselves well, they're going to have to get their legs in shape so they can can hold that that, that position a little bit longer. See, our catchers are awesome, Tori. We got to keep them on their toes, right? right. And yeah. we want to help them play the play the yeah. game. We want to help play the game the way it's supposed to be played. And and just sitting in one spot and watching everything going around you is not it. And they work so hard that uh, to have all these uh, different advantages, I think, would right. be be exciting. Yeah, that would be awesome. So that's going to wrap up number one eighty three. Please make sure you support Anderson Bat. Go to Patreon.com. Slash everything fast pitch, become a patron if you can. Go to the fastpitchprep.com website, order your square cuts, training discs. Make sure you check out the YouTube channel and the blogs, uh, tons and tons of information. And as always, please make sure you reach out to us with player of the week nominations, questions, topics, and ideas. Do everything fastpitch at gmail.com or fastpitchprep at gmail.com. For Coach Don McKinley, our producer Stan Lewis, this is Coach Tori saying thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again next week.